And on a prior video, I reviewed the Godiak GT100 Plus, which is a very interesting tool that can allow us to test a car's computer either on or off the vehicle. And I demonstrated the use of this tool with a car computer, in fact, the computer from my Dodge Neon SRT4. And on this video, I'm gonna show you how the connections were made. My fellow car enthusiasts, welcome back to the channel. I am Alex the Car Guy, and I review cool car products and other accessories for your vehicle. So if those are the kind of videos you like make sure you subscribe by hitting the button down below to see more videos like this and while the connections i show you on this video are specific to the dodge neon srt4 computer this video is going to be also helpful for anybody that's trying to learn how to use the godiak gt100 plus to pin out their computer and power it up for testing if you have not seen the godiak gt100 plus video you might find it helpful to watch that video first before watching this one so just so you can get an overview of how the tool works before before we actually move over to connecting a computer to it. And as always, I'll place a link in the description down below to the GT100 Plus and any other tools that you'll see me use on this video. But with that being said, let's get started. And the very first step is preparation. So as you can see, my work area is clear of anything that doesn't need to be here. I have my Godiak GT100 box, my PCM, uh, OBD2 scanner, and then I have the instructions for the Godiak GT100 box. Now, as you can see, I've also sorted out the wires that are gonna be connected to the PCM, and that just makes it a lot easier to find which wire goes where. Even though they are labeled, it's nice that they're color-coded. So as you can see, the red wires are all power wires, and the ground wires are all brown in color. Then the yellow wires are wires that are gonna go to the OBD positions, and each one has a number right there. And then these wires right here are also gonna go to OBD positions, but these are the famous CAN low, CAN high, L line, K line, which is gonna depend on the type of computer uh, that we are testing. But another interesting thing to point out is that for some of the sockets, they gave us two sizes, a larger one and a smaller one. They're going to the same place, notice 1215 and 1215. So this gives us the freedom of using either the big one or the smaller one. Now, as you can see the bigger one, that one is really meant for a flat contact where the smaller one is meant more for a round contact in this particular PCM we have round contacts so I could potentially use the small ones in there but again technically I could use either one as long as it happens to fit correctly on there because both of them are going to the same position and on this close-up I'm gonna show you how I make the actual connection to the pin and one of the things that is really important anytime you're dealing with computer pins is to make sure that we don't bend them or break them so notice how I'm pushing straight down and making sure that I'm not putting any kind of pressure either to the left or to the right because if that pin breaks you are done and as you can see I have fully bottomed that out without no issue and without subjecting the pin to any kind of stress I'm also careful when I remove the socket from the pin I'm gonna pull straight up because again I am trying to avoid breaking or damaging that pin and there it is. And we'll start with the power and ground connections. And most of them are located inside of this cavity, which is known as cavity one or cavity A of the PCM. The very first one is to position number nine, and that is a ground. After that, if we go all the way over here, we can see position 11. Position 11 is connected to positive power, and this happens to be connected to 12 volts of the 15 switch of the GT100 box, which means this is only gonna get power when I throw that 15 switch on. Then after that, if we jump all the way on here to position 18 that is another ground from there if i keep going down here we're gonna see position 29 position 29 also has positive power but this is battery power so this is connected to 12 volt 30 of the gt100 box so this only receives power when i throw the switch the 1230 switch on the gt100 box and from there we'll jump to cavity 3 also known as cavity c in the service manual and here i only have to make two connections one is to position 19 and the second one is to position 28 both of these connections are going to the ASD relay and they need positive power that is connected to the GT100 box to 12 volts 15. So this will only have power when I throw the switch 
12 volt 15 simulating that I turned the key on on the vehicle. And for the OBD2 functionality, you can see that I only had to connect three wires. The very first wire was connected to position 25, which is the receiving line for the PCM. And the next wire was connected to position 36, which is the transmit line for the PCM. And finally, the last wire was connected to the position 38, which is the PCI bus for the PCM. And one last thing that I do when I'm dealing with electrical wiring is I like to double check my work. So I check that thing two or three times to make sure that every single wire has been connected to the right pin before I apply power. There is a possibility that if I connect an incorrect wire to the computer, I can potentially damage something. So I'll always like to be on the safe side of safe before applying power. And now that I confirmed that all my pins are connected correctly, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in so it can provide power. Now the box is still off. Noted that all the switches are in the off position, but now there is power running through here. And you can even see the OBD2 scan tool starting to power up. And now I can turn the Godiak GT100 Plus on and that turns on the box itself. We are not providing the main power to the computer yet. And the next switch that I'm gonna throw is the middle one right here. Now this is, is gonna simulate me having the battery connected on the vehicle. So now the computer is gonna potentially start to receive power, just like if it was sitting on a car and the car is completely turned off. But to actually get access to the computer, you know you have to turn the key to the on position to get access to the OBD2 functionality. And we can simulate turning that key to the on position by flipping the last switch. Right away we can see that the computer begins to boot up and we have a certain amount of amperage being pulled, in this case 0.17. So the computer is starting up and we also get this indicator right here which is telling us that there is communication that is going on between the computer through the tool to the scanner. And if we look at this a little bit closer, we can see that we can confirm the power connection is active. We can see the light is on for position 16 of the OBD connector. And we have the two grounds required for functionality. In position number four, which is the chassis ground, and position number five, which is the signal ground. Both of them have LED lights showing that those connections are ready. Now at this point, I can begin to connect to the computer and pull any OBD data I need from it, such as any DTCs or the VIN number, calibration ID number, and if I were to simulate any sensors, I can read the live data on my tool to confirm the functionality of the tool. I could also do advanced troubleshooting by probing directly into the OBD2 connections over here, typically with a scope or a voltmeter, or directly onto those pins right there. However, I do not want to just randomly probe things if I'm not familiar how the computer testing works, otherwise I could potentially damage something. And the last two things that I want to point out are regarding power. As you can see right now, this setup is being powered by the adapter that they included, which produces 12 volts and 2 amps. However, some people prefer to run this system off an adjustable power supply where we can control the voltage and more importantly, we can control the maximum amount of amps that can be delivered. Now, why do we want to control the amps? Well, because if there was a problem in here, such as an internal short circuit or some kind of driver that has failed, that can pull a lot of amps very quickly and make the situation worse and because this adapter will just supply the amount of amps that this is asking for we can potentially fry something very quickly where on an adjustable power supply by limiting the amount of amps that it can pull even if it wants to it's going to be limited by that adjustable power supply but the other advantage of using an adjustable power supply is that this only supplies 12 volts which is more than sufficient for diagnostics however if i'm looking to write to this computer or do programming to this computer, some of that software requires more than 12 volts. Some of that software requires 13 volts. So being able to increase that voltage to add the voltage required for the software is very helpful if I'm using an adjustable power supply versus this where I'm capped at 12 volts. So hopefully this video helped you understand how I made the connections from a car computer to the Godiak GT100 Plus for testing. And while the video showed the connections that are specific to the Dodge Neon SR34, the same techniques can be applied to a different car's computer. As long as we are able to reach the service manual and car schematics, making the connections is fairly straightforward. Now, if you would like to learn how to read car schematics, I do have another video
video coming up where I'm gonna go and show you through that process of how those schematics works and how we can use them to troubleshoot the electrical issues on our vehicle. So stay tuned for that video. And remember, I placed a link in the description down below to the Godiak GT100 Plus in case you wanna look at it further. And if you have any other questions regarding how I made the connections to the GT100 Plus, please put that in the comments down below. If you found any part of this video helpful, hit the thumbs up button to support the channel. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.